Hello everybody, welcome back. I am Lunaris and this is Dark Souls. Uh, so at the end of the last episode, or during the last episode, I said we would stop and talk about some of the items that we picked up because they were kind of uh, important to the story or the, the goings-on of all the things you're not really involved with. But they, they make for neat little conversation pieces anyway. So what we're going to look at is the mask, the uh, Sealer set, the Silver Knight set, and Havel set and uh, a couple of the weapons that we picked up. Mask of the sorcerers who flooded New Londo to seal away the Dark Wraiths and the four kings who descended into Dark. It symbolizes their resolve to keep the seal shut forever and their atonement for all who were sacrificed, but two of the three forsook New Londo upon tiring of their duty. Robe of the sorcerers who flooded New Londo to seal away the Dark Wraiths. The sealers were once known as healers and the bright crimson is a symbol of that. Silver Knight Helm. Helm of the Silver Knights who protect An Orlando. When Lord Gwyn departed to link the fire, his knights split into two groups. The Silver Knights remained in the Forsaken Capital to the, in service of their goddess. Helm worn by Havel the Rock's warriors, carved from solid rock, its tremendous weight is matched only by the defense it provides. Havel's warriors never flinched nor retreated from battle. Those unfortunate enough to face them were inevitably beaten to a pulp. Uh, and the armor says the same thing. So... This is the armor of Havel's soldiers. It doesn't say specifically that it's the armor of Havel, but it's, it's commonly accepted that Havel the Rock wore this armor as well. Catalyst of the banishment sorcerers who flooded New Londo to seal away the Dark Wraiths and kings who fell to the Dark. In contrast to other catalysts, the metal catalyst qualifies as a weapon as it inflicts physical damage, however small. Havel's Great Shield. Great Shield of the legendary Havel the Rock, cut straight from a great slab of stone. This great shield is imbued with the magic of Havel and provides strong defense and is, is incredibly heavy. A true divine heirloom on par with the Dragon Tooth. Created from an everlasting Dragon Tooth. Legendary Hammer of Havel the Rock. The Dragon Tooth will never break it as it is harder than stone, and it grants its wielder resistance to magic and flame. Interesting. I think that was all I wanted to talk about. So now that we've healed up, and I, I did level up once, I leveled up my Endurance. We're at 24 now. Uh, as soon as we get Endurance to 25, we will begin leveling up the Vitality stat. Because that's important as well. So now we just have to make our way back. And hopefully with these shortcuts open, it won't be too terrible. Because we did open up a shortcut. Come on, dude. Come on out. I probably should have beefed up my bonfire's Estus flask count, but that's fine. Um, we can fix it if we die. That's whatever. And where we want to go is up here. Now if we can see... We're going to go across the top because I don't want to deal with those big guys down at the bottom yet. 
And there's another smaller shortcut I can open over on this side. And I can also drop down there to get a weapon or an item or whatever, but I'll do that after I open up the shortcuts. But if we go here... I hear a blacksmith. So this guy can forge weapons and armor, just like my other blacksmiths, but he specializes in, uh, if, you, if you give him the proper tools, he can forge crystal and lightning and something else. I, he, he is also the one that will forge uh, boss souls into weapons, which we may do later, but I think I'm just going to use the boss souls for souls, because... The scythe is going to be my primary weapon. But yeah, he offers all of these. Should you choose to buy them. Which is nice. The Twinkling Titanite will be useful. Uh, specifically if we decide to switch to an armor that requires it or switch to a weapon that requires it. let him kill himself. Now we have a, a small shortcut open. It's not the one that we really want, but we can get the one that we really want here in a moment. Because um, we can open those big doors at the top and then just run straight through if we have to. If we ever find ourselves needing to come back. You'll see what I mean here in a second. I'd been trying to think earlier if we would need to buy any of the Twinkling Titanite stuff from uh, that one. Like, if we'll need the Twinkling Titanite for anything. And I, and I could not remember for the life of me. So I may not bother with it. I couldn't remember if there's ever going to be a weapon that we will use or an armor that we will use that will use it. Probably the Astora Sword, if I'm absolutely honest. Gonna try and stay away from those guys, honestly. I don't want anything to do with the big guys. Just want to open this door. So now we have all the shortcuts open. And there's nothing left to do uh, here in this main area. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the bonfire. I'm going to rest up. And then I'm going to get ready to fight the boss. So I'm going to reverse hollowing.
Then we're gonna kindle the bonfire. So now we just have to make our way back to the boss. And, you know, every time, every time we do this, I mean, if, if, I am so sick and tired of missing my backstabs, but yeah, every time we do this, uh, this will have to be the routine, so. There may be lots of lots of cut running uh, if this boss fight goes poorly, which it probably. I mean, I mean it may. It's it's a tough fight. However, if I play it intelligently, it should be okay. These guys are much tougher uh, than their compatriots outside. But thankfully, I didn't let him get the better of me, so that's good. That's that's actually a, that was a really good, uh, really good turn there. I do not want that guy's attention because I need to take care of this archer. And if I do this correctly and get through this, I can summon Solaire. So that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try to get through this without taking too much damage. Try to space him out here. Try to pull him away from the columns. I missed. I missed. I didn't get around his shield that time, that's unfortunate. Alright, well, I took more damage there than I wanted to, but that's fine. Um, I should be okay. I'm trying to think if there's anything that I can do. Um, to better prepare myself at all. Solaire's okay in this fight. He he's not great, but he's all right in this fight. Um, if anything, he's just going to give them more HP. But that might be tolerable. That might be bearable. Oh boy, this is this is going to be. Uh, this is going to be a task. Um, I may want to try the power within thing uh, later like after I don't have to see the cutscene again 
Like if if I fail. We have to fight two bosses at once. <laughs> now the idea here, or at least the way I'm going to try and do it, is um, I got to get Smalls away from Biggie. Wow, okay. Cool. And so that worked out in my favor. And now... Samo has Ornstein's increased lightning power. Watch out for the butt stomp. And we got him. Wow. Wow. Nice. Woo. I'm going to big up myself right there. That was awesome. <laughs> Solaire helped a lot. Uh, he was, wow, he was a lot more help than I thought he'd be. Normally, what happens when you summon in Solaire, uh, or anyone else for that matter, um, you can summon up to two partners to help you fight. And when you do, for every partner that you summon in, um, the boss gets 50% more HP. So, if I hadn't had Solaire there, the bosses would have took taken fewer hits to beat, but they would have both been focused on me the entire time, and it would have made it much, much harder for me to fight. I thought there was like a secret treasure chest over there for some reason. I was thinking there was a treasure chest up here somewhere. I was... I was mistaken. That's fine. Because... we have a bonfire. <laughs> Oh, this is so awesome. I can't believe I did that in one try. Like, I, I normally I have to get into a rhythm with those guys, so that was pretty cool. I'm proud of that. Let's push forward. See who they were protecting. Oh my. Thou hast journeyed far, and overcome much chosen undead. Come hither, child. O chosen undead, I am Guinevere, daughter of Lord Gwyn and Queen of Sunlight. Since the day Father is formed in Obscurus, I have awaited thee. I bequeath the Lord Vessel to thee. Cool. Now we can warp between bonfires. Excellent. 
There are only specific bonfires that we can warp to and from, but still, this is going to make travel uh, a hell of a lot easier. And beseech thee, succeed Lord Queen, and inheriteth the fire of our world. Thou shalt endeth this eternal twilight, and avert further undead sacrifices. So according to her, we now have the ability to take Lord Gwyn's place by linking the fire. And if we do that, it will bring back light to the world and it will end the curse of the undead. But she, just like King Seeker Frampt, was being very vague as to what exactly that means. So we'll just have to see. And I'm actually trying to rack my brain as to where I want to go next. Actually, I feel like just for because reasons, I, I feel like I want to take these souls to the blacksmith and buy the Twinkling Titanite and get him to upgrade my sword. Uh, but we will go ahead and do that next time. I am Lunaris and this has been Dark Souls and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.